think that'll be just fine. So, this. This is King's Quest, Quest for the Crown. Uh, this is the original. Uh, <laughs> so I think I, I made it so that that's less ear-piercing for you. Because this is incredibly loud in my ears. Uh, goodness. We're gonna listen to this. <laughs> so, uh, I guess Green Sleeves is in the public domain? Ah, good. Game audio is pretty loud. That's important. Uh, because this is kind of ear splitting. Also, I guess they, um, I, I, I guess that you can't, in MIDI, you can't, like, put a, like, cause the same note to go again, so they can't, uh, like, they can't put the, the same note twice in a row if it's the same pitch, they just have to hold it for that long, which is a little weird. Uh, Okay, so King's Quest came out in, I think it was just the very tail end of 1983 for the IBM PC Jr. Uh, basically, it was it was supposed to be this killer app that would help them sell the, sell the machine, and then it was released for normal, like, general PCs in 1984. Uh, so I don't know exactly what happened between 1984 and 1987, or they felt the need to re-copyright it. But, uh, but that's what I got. So, uh, let's press a key to continue. So, my favorite part about this game is this bridge. Because it, it is exactly what it looks like in a 2D way. You can just walk from here to here, from here to here. Uh, I didn't know that as a kid, so I was trying to, like, get over here to where the bridge was, and then I would fall in. Uh, swim? No. So, uh, oh good, I drowned before they got to me. Yeah. So I think, I think that sets the tone for this game. This game is very good. Uh, one other thing is that it has, uh, you could see I was walking pretty dang slowly. There is normal, fast, or slow. So this is normal. Uh, normal is pretty slow. Slow is even worse. And this is only really good if you're, like, trying to do some pixel-perfect ledge navigation. Uh, but this, some, some King's Quest games have four speeds, normal, or slow, normal, fast, and fastest. This only has three. Uh, really what they cut out is the fast, the, just, when you have four options, the fastest is equivalent to the fast one here. Uh, the problem with this is, uh, it goes absolutely as fast as your computer can handle. So, you know... Alligators. So it, you'll just you'll just keep going. Oh, I found I found a fairy godmother. So now we're protected. Uh, and now the spell has departed because it's been you know forever, and now we've drowned. So that's a uh, that's King's Quest. But um, so. Uh, because, partially because this doesn't have the fast, the fast speed option, uh, I'm actually not going to play this version of the game. Ah, MIDI wasn't a thing until Ken and Roberta Williams made SCI, which ran King's Quest 4. Um, yes, no, okay, yeah, uh, King's Quest 4 was the first game in the series that, uh, could take advantage of a sound card. And I guess that's, uh, that's, MIDI ran on sound cards, I guess. So, thank you, thank you for that. That's good information.
But, uh, but yeah, so I guess this used, like, the actual computer beeps and boops, which is terrifying, uh, especially when you're trying to play late at night, and your parents don't know you're still awake, and you're... It's like you've muted your speakers, but it doesn't matter. It's coming from the computer. So that's... that's crazy. But yeah, so I'm actually not going to play the original version of the game, which is kind of heresy. Uh, but I think it's, I think it's for the best for everyone involved. Uh, later I will get back to the original series and the text parser, because the text parser is excellent and I love it. But as far as, like, easter eggs or anything, the only thing I can think of is that we'd be missing out on the original gnome name puzzle. Uh, I'm actually not sure how they do that without a text parser. Because you have, you have to guess a gnome's name, and it's um it's not Rumpelstiltskin, because that would be too easy. So I'm not sure how that works. But we're going to move on to... This. Which is the remake of King's Quest 1. By uh, AGDI. At the time, they were called Tierra. Which uh, got them sued. Not sued, but they got a cease and desist. Uh, but because they had already released the game and a ton of people had played it... Oh goodness. Since they released the game and a ton of people had played it, they they couldn't really like tell them to take it down. It would just end up back on torrent websites or what have you. Okay. I'm gonna turn the volume down a little. But... So they really didn't have anything they could do, they just made them change the name to AGD Interactive. AGDI. And, uh... I like AGDI a lot. So basically what they did is they tried to remake the game in King's Quest V style graphics. Which I think worked out really well. This crown is off-center and that's really bugging me. But anyway, let's check out the intro. Get some backstory for the game. You are Sir Graham, the bravest and most honorable knight in the troubled realm of Daventry, King Edward the Benevolent, aged ruler of Daventry, aged. has summoned you to the castle. Yeah. For reasons unknown. Greetings, Sir Graham. The king is expecting you. Little tiny hat. Allow me to escort you to his majesty's throne room. Thank you, Sir Knight. Josh, get a better mic. Uh... Rise the portcullis. Game voice is hard to hear? I am at your service, my king. I am an old man, Sir Graham. Perhaps too old to carry the weight of this crown. My palms ache, my hands tremble. I am afraid my time on earth will short. But enough about me. Great misfortunes have befallen Daventry since the lost years ago of three magical treasures. I have chosen you. The finest knight in all of Daventry to search for these lost treasures. Only then can this kingdom be restored to its former glory. And only then may I rest with the knowledge that my people are safe. The first treasure is a magic mirror that foretells the future. The second is a magical shield that protects the mirror from all mortal harm. The third and last is an enchanted chest that is forever filled with gold. How exactly did we end up giving these up? I know that what I ask is difficult. Nay, perhaps impossible. The dangers are many. But you are brave and pure of heart. That is why I chose you to volunteer. I chose you, you to volunteer. Inherit That's good. Crown and rule the realm of Daventry as her rightful king. Go, Sir Graham. The fate of Daventry lies in your hands. Take heart, my king. I shall not fail you. Josh, get a better mic. I 
I think the woodpecker was just replaced with with game sound. Uh, anyway, uh, is the audio balance a little better? I turned up the game a little bit, uh, which I hope sounds good. All right, so uh, the they got the actual like in King's Quest V. Uh, Graham was voiced by Josh Mandel, who was a programmer, because everyone in King's Quest V is voiced by programmers, which you'll see. Uh, but in uh, these Tierra remakes, they actually got Josh Mandel to do the voices, and just in general, Josh Mandel's, I think, pretty easy to, to get a, a hang handle on if you are a, a fan group. But, uh... But yeah... So they got, like, the official voice of Grimm, but his mic is awful. <laughs> he sounds so bad. I mean, especially compared to the rest of these people, which I'm sure were also all volunteers. So, whatever. It's a it's a fan game. It's cool that they got the actual voice actor, but, uh... Oh, man. Would you like to play the game without the possibility of encountering dead ends or getting stuck? Uh, no. You have selected to play with dead ends enabled. Yes. The game will play exactly the same way as the EGA version of King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown. So, uh, Sierra actually did a remake of this game with a, uh, with a text parser. And it honestly looked a lot like this. Uh, the graphics weren't quite as good, but, like, reduced the resolution by half, and it was, it was pretty similar. Uh... Our alligators have been replaced with sea monsters. This deep swampy moat is patrolled by vicious serpents. Can we get one of them to pop up? Yeah. They're cool. You are standing outside King Edward's castle, okay. which is surrounded by a serpent-filled moat. All right. The castle walls are carpeted with a thick tangle of vines. Can we climb them? The the guards do not appreciate people climbing the castle. Well, it'll be my castle soon. These stone-faced guards must have been trained not to converse with anybody. They ignore you, Sir Graham. Uh, all right. But yeah, no, Josh Mandel has been been really, really chill and and super friendly with fan groups and. Just generally, he seems like a pretty cool and, and funny guy. Alright. It's very quiet here, for some reason. You're in a shady forest clearing. A large rock rests in the middle of the clearing. Hmm. You see a large gray rock. Yeah, there were some water reflections, but not, not consistent ones. Uh... Like, there are none here? Even though it seems like there kind of should be. Yeah, because you can see the top of the of the bridge. You can't see me. But you can see him here, and that's super cool. So yeah. Good on you. Honestly, I can't say enough nice things about AGDI. Uh, but I'll, I'll probably save most of them for uh, later. So this is a uh, this is the first puzzle in the game. Uh. Yep. The moving rock rolls downhill and right into you. A crushing defeat. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's good. That's good. Uh, do not stand in front of rocks when you're pushing them. I guess, I guess because the, the coefficient of kinetic friction is lower than the coefficient of static friction, so you pushed it in a direction. With a small shove, you manage to push the rock a few feet, revealing a shallow hole underneath. So you, you, you push the rock in a direction, which overcame the static friction, and then it only had to overcome kinetic friction, and I guess gravity was enough to pull it pull it down the hill. So that's that's how that worked. That's how you got crushed you reach by a rock. You into the hole and find an intricately carved dagger. You carefully lift it out, being careful not to cut yourself. 
All right, so we've got an inventory item. So that's cool. This is a fine silver dagger with a silver. very sharp edge. You can't read the runes on the blade, but it appears to be an elfish dagger of great antiquity. Dang. Was was this one of the treasures? Um, anyway, there's actually, there's backstory to the whole treasure thing that, uh, we're gonna climb this tree. There's backstory to the whole treasure thing as to how we lost those three treasures of Daventry. Finding plenty of footholds in the coarse bark of the tree, you easily clamber up the trunk to the branches above. Clambering, yes. But, uh, b basically, uh, so... It's like some witch came along and and seduced him and stole the gold or no I think some witch came around and seduced him and stole the uh, the shield and then in the mirror he could see like the destruction of Daventry it's like oh no we're gonna we're gonna get attacked everything's ruined and then like some wizard came and was like hey I can totally help you if you give me that magic mirror and then he didn't because he's a jerk and then i forget who took the who took the chest of all of the coins and everything but uh it's rough yeah in general i think the text parser games are a little more fun uh they're they're frustrating at times because you end up with stuff like uh it's like i know what i i know there's something there the golden egg but i don't know how to look at it and I can't, like, type look whatever. If I type, like, look, it doesn't show up in the description. Uh, and so it's like, I don't know what this is, I know it's important, but I can't figure out what it is. And that's, I think, the weakness of the text parser, but you can do so many more creative things. And so, in general, I think it's more fun. And we, I promise we'll get to some text parser games with this. I'm not gonna play all of the remakes. Uh, and not just because there isn't a remake of King's Quest IV. Which, which is important. So, yeah, making- I, I would love to see more, like, old-school text parser games. I think that kind of creativity would be just way more fun. I'm gonna turn the speed all the way up. And save. Yeah, I don't know anything about the narrator. Without water, oh no! Darts out of the bushes and runs straight for you! Look out! Don't let him catch you! Ah, uh, no! I'm ruined! He's also ruined! Uh... This could be a problem. Oh, oh no! How many times have you been told not to wolf down your food? <sighs> so this game has random encounters, but uh, unlike in an RPG, for example, where the random encounters are something that you overcome. The uh, only response you get is the echo of your pounding. These random encounters just kill you. Uh, basically anything that you encounter will. Can I, can I not go to the right side of the screen? Oh, there we go. Whatever, I guess, allergic to wolves. Uh, collision is super hard, you guys. Ooh. There appears to be some sort of bowl sitting next to the tree. You pick up the bowl. Yeah. Inscribed on the inside of this empty ceramic bowl is the word fill. Interesting. To your astonishment, something begins to bubble up from the bottom of the bowl. Within moments, the bowl is filled with a hot, savory stew. Uh, so... In the original, you would have had to type the word fill, but I guess now you can just you can just use the hand on it. But look, food! We have food. I may have actually missed a point there. I mean, I got a point. I don't know. We'll, we'll see later. Hmm. See, I don't, I don't have, like, a walkthrough handy. I'm sort of doing this by memory, and I haven't actually played this game in a while. So, some things might go poorly. Save early, save often. Suddenly, oh no! the heavy footfalls of an ogre. He stomps into the clearing, spots you, and decides to crush the life out of you. Ah! You were warned, ogre and ogre again. Oh, please tell me I didn't just screw myself. Okay, let's get out of here. Uh, 
Yeah, that's the nice thing, is that you can save right before something that will be immediately deadly. And, uh, oh, a squirrel. There's a large walnut tree surrounded by several pine trees. What about the squirrel? There's a lot. The squirrel seems hesitant about climbing its favorite walnut tree with you standing around. Aww. All right, let's get a walnut. Walnuts are important. You choose a big, meaty-looking walnut from the bunch scattered around. Tasty walnuts. Let's let's have some tasty walnut. You are holding an ordinary walnut. An ordinary walnut. When you open the walnut, you discover the nut inside is pure gold. Nah, yeah, lying narrator. When you open the... Uh, but, uh, what I believe it was talking about when it said, like, do you want to enable no, no dead end mode? Is that, uh, there's, there's also a, a gnome that can steal your items. And... Uh, he can steal, like, one of the legendary treasures of Daventry. Yeah, I should be saving in multiple save files. Uh. Hmm. Oh, look, a cave. Yes, dark. Good. Yes, this looks good. Okay, wouldn't let me, wouldn't let me finish, but that's fine. It is a huge piece of granite. Hmm. It is a. It's impossible for you to move a boulder this large. It's impossible for me to move a boulder this large. All right. And I think. Let me turn this on. Yeah, so I can skip skip walking with with escape. So I can zip around. Ooh, who's that? The surrounding boulders of trees are reflected on a small mirror-like lake. You say that? Uh, but they're not? That's fine. That's fine. It's really hard. Ooh, is this? An unusual clover glistens in the middle of the patch. Whatever you say. I like the, the butterfly made up of like three pixels. a large four-leaf clover from the patch. So yeah, a lot of these things, the walnut, the clover, are basically sort of ordinary treasures they don't serve any mechanical perp well the clover does uh, but like a lot of these don't serve any mechanical purpose they just kind of exist to, to hang out uh, the gnome may steal them instead of the treasures and oop! your attempt at cliff diving was a smashing failure it's fair uh, I completely forgot what I was saying. Uh, this is carrots. a well-tended carrot patch. The carrots look tempting to a hungry traveler. Mmm, carrots. You but pluck yeah. a plump orange carrot from the ground. The treasures are basically just for points. I think you can use them as alternate puzzle solutions, uh, but they give you fewer points if you use them. You should be using like the real solution. You did another King's Quest, right? With the bear and the honey and the sad tree? I, yes, uh, Kaz and I played the NES port of King's Quest V. Uh, I will be playing the actual version of King's Quest V, which is so much more excellent because of the voice acting. Hmm. Alright, well let's, let's do a sweep. Ah, yes, let's head into this dark and scary looking forest. We got killed by an ogre last time we were here. But this time, nothing. Ooh. What is this? An old axe is permanently wedged into the tree stump. The handle has been broken and repaired. The head shows the signs of many sharpenings. Okay, well, I mean, they've built a house. The woodcutter speaks to you, his voice broken with sorrow. We would welcome you to our home, Sir Knight, but we've had no food for so long. My beautiful wife cannot even rise from her bed. I fear she may die soon. Oh. Uh. Hold on. An old earthenware pitcher sits on the table. 
You cannot get the picture. If there was something of value in there, the woodcutter and his wife would not be starving to death. All right, all right. Anyway, uh, so I think I'm not sure if it makes a difference whether you fill the bowl or not. So I'm gonna actually I'm gonna save. So I'm gonna try drinking, just eating this in front of them. It would be terribly <laughs> cruel to eat in front of the poor, <laughs> starving people. Your conscience prevents you from being so inconsiderate. Okay, I'm gonna leave. You eat every bite of the delicious stew. Okay, did my points go up or down? I saw them change. Okay, I got I got negative points for eating the stew, so I'm just gonna go ahead and give it to him. The woodcutter is overwhelmed with joy. By the way, it magically fills up. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Knight. We shall never forget your kindness and generosity. Please, take my fiddle as a small token of our thanks. This fiddle is crucially important. Uh, I, I always felt like it was better to give, give the bowl to them empty, because then, like, they could see that it said fill, and then I could teach them how to use it. And then, uh, what I'm worried is that they're just gonna eat the soup, and that's it. And then they're gonna starve to death just later. So, like, that, that solution to the puzzle has always made me a little uncomfortable. Alright, we, we did it. Eating the soup was bad, so... Can we pass this? This is an okay bridge. Alright, in that case, let's go down this way. In that case, let's not cross it. Come on. Oop, okay. I think this is where I died before. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I mean, you teach a man how to fill a magical bowl and he eats, he eats for the rest of his life. Oh no! As you start to cross the bridge, a huge hulking troll stomps into view and blocks your way. I'll be over here. Maybe I won't. Hello. Oh, <laughs> you shoved me! What we got here? Whoa. You think you're gonna cross my bridge, do you? Not for free, you ain't. You're like the little chatterbox, ain't ya? Well, let me warn ya. These bridges have been in my family for years and years. Nobody, especially not a puny little guy like yourself, has ever passed across one of our bridges without being our troll hole. The troll tool. So yeah, this would be one of the, the examples where I could give him a treasure. You give the gold walnut to the troll, and it appears to satisfy him. He tromps off, leaving the bridge clear for you to cross. But yeah, that deducted three points, and, uh, and is bad, so let's not do that. Back to the dramatic music. Uh, I guess we can't go that way. Hmm. Hmm, what's in here? From here, you can see that the stump is very old and rotting away. A dark hole at the top catches your attention. The early King's Quest games will teach you very clearly that any, like, tree, like, hole in tree, or, or rotting stump, or anything, has something important in it. You should look into dark holes before putting your hand down them, Sir Graham. Lude. Inside the rotting stump, you notice a small leather pouch. As you lift the pouch from the stump, you feel its contents shifting inside. As far as pre-rendered backgrounds where it's hard to tell which terrain is traversable, Final Fantasy ain't got shit on this. I, I don't think it's that bad, because at least I know where I am on the screen. When you peek inside the leather pouch, you discover it's filled with diamonds. Filled with diamonds. 
Cautiously, you open the pouch and see many sparkling and flashing diamonds. Diamonds. Then you close it again so as not to lose any. And, uh... I don't know. I mean, the problem with this game isn't not knowing what terrain is traversable. It's not knowing which There's items... There's a hole in the side of the log. Not knowing which items are, uh... You peer into the darkness inside the log, but there's nothing at all inside. ...are interactable. Usually, like, pre-rendered backgrounds look completely drawn, and interactable items look pasted on top. I mean, you know, just like Graham looks. Uh, but sometimes they break that rule. It is, it is always a dick move. Ooh. This weathered old bucket has served the kingdom for years and years. It still holds water as well as it did on the day it was made. That sounds good. Let's get in it. Boop. After you are in the old bucket, your weight causes it to slowly descend. Definitely try this at home, kids. Uh, okay. Uh, now we're in a bucket. If, uh, if we didn't have the knife, we would be stuck. I think. We might be able to climb up. Oh, okay. We can climb up. That might be new. Well, anyway, let's get back in the bucket. And let's cut ourselves free. Ah! Hello. Take bucket. No! Unfortunately, the walls of the well are too slick and slimy to be climbed. That is not what I wanted. I want bucket. You managed to take the bucket. That probably is difficult, legitimately. You Ooh. are too far away. There's a treasure chest. This isn't the chest you're looking for. Dang it. No, no magical chest full of coins. Alright, let's get out of here then. Okay. Now we're in magical music. Uh. You are holding an empty wooden bucket. Nothing. You kneel down and fill the bucket with the cool water. Yeah, bucket time. All right. Let's see what's off to the left. Oh. Greed and scaly, the dragon is massive and muscular. Serrated armor stretches from its tail to its neck. His leathery wings are folded against his sides, and his webbed claws look sharp and deadly. The ferocious, fire-breathing dragon is protecting the magic mirror. Can't argue with that. The mirror shimmers with its own magical light. So yeah, this is this is one of the three treasures. We're we're already already there. Just have to. Get up, oh, hmm. Uh, hello? Think again. When this dragon talks, things have a tendency to catch fire. Uh, what if I just slowly and carefully make, okay. The narrator knows everything. Too close to the dragon's flame, you made an ash out of yourself. Hmm. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so obviously the thing to do is uh is violence. So let's let's kill it. Come on, Graham. Graham. With unerring aim. The dagger spins through the air and pierces the soft, unprotected skin under the dragon's throat. The beast convulses for a moment, then crashes, lifeless, to the hard cavern floor. Done. That's how you play video games. Uh, so yeah, we can, we can do that. The dragon lies motionless on the rocky floor of the cavern. This is frowned upon. In general, in the King's Quest games, uh, violence is an answer, usually, uh, but a, a bad one, uh, because just like in real life, it's 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 a lot better if you solve your problems with 
extremely complicated solutions that make sense to no one. So let's let's try that. I know we just walked in this dude's home and killed him to steal his stuff. That is that's pretty rude. So let's just try making a fool out of him. Good shot. The water hits the dragon square in the face, dousing his fire. Hey, Lucy. Uh, I assure you there will be more puns. Unable to defend itself with anything more than harmless clouds of steam, the dragon rolls aside the granite boulder and slinks off in shame, leaving the mirror behind. Ah. Beautiful. The mirror shimmers with its own magical light. So yeah, we did it. You take the magic mirror. Congratulations! Yay! So yeah, uh, we're at 68 out of 158 points. So assuming that we're on track for 100% completion, which I make no make no promises, uh, then we're over a third of the way a third of the way done. It was also pretty rude. And, you know, we're in this cave now. If, if you if you want to see the death, I can show that again. Cuz... Cuz Lucy's here. We're gonna piss off a dragon. By venturing too close to the dragon's flame, you made an ash out of yourself. Oh no. Abyss Hunted's already explaining it. Oh well. The point is, is that look at the cute little ash pile with with eyeballs. He's got like got a little frowny face even. He's got a frowny face. That ash pile is sad and dead. Anyway. Okay. Well, we're uh, we're a third of the way done. This is another troll toll, yeah. As you Goodbye. The sad ash pile would be a great avatar. Ooh. What do we have here? Goat. The goat is wandering this way and that, exploring his little pin. Goats are important. There's no it would be easier to just open the gate. But I don't want to let the goat out. Goat. Someone has built a small goat pen here. Goat, no, goat, goat, come back. Oh no! Oh no! He has escaped through the gate you left open. He could have wandered anywhere by now. <laughs> oh no! I did bad goat things. Goat out! Goat out. I actually don't know what happens, so I'm just gonna restore. Okay. There's no So anyway. Uh Let's fix that. I want a pet goat. Goat pet. You wouldn't get very far carrying a goat. Perhaps you can get him to follow you if you'd like to take him somewhere. Hmm. All right. So again, another another thing is in the text parser. It. Nothing. This is harder. Nothing happened. Goat. Very clever. You tempt the goat with a carrot, and he begins to follow you around. You've made a friend. Goat theme. Goat theme. Uh, but yeah. So, uh... In the text version of the game... You had better wait for the... You have to, like, you can say, like, give carrot to goat, show carrot, but you have to say either show carrot to goat or, like, tempt carrot... Sorry, show carrot to goat or tempt goat with carrot. 
Otherwise, it uh, it will not. It it will just eat it. Anyway, what I really really want is to find one of those random encounters again. Who was this? What a pretty bed of wildflowers. It would be a shame to pick the lovely wildflowers. All right, entice coat goat with carrot. Goat, goat time. Hmm. The path to the front door is lined with little gingerbread boys and girls. This is the most marvelous house you've ever seen. It seems like it's made of a huge gingerbread cupcake with frosting for a roof. The chimney is made of gummy bricks. The door is made of chocolate. The fence is made of candy canes. And sour ball stones and gumdrops are scattered around the yard. What is a sour ball stone? Anyway, I don't know if, if goat is allowed here. As you knock on the chocolate door, a squeaky voice from inside the house answers, Who is there? I love visitors, especially young tender ones. Come in, come in. That is some voice acting. Let's leave. As you begin to eat the house, a squeaky voice from somewhere says, No one. That was worth points, by the way. As you begin, hmm. I wonder if she's always there if you have goat. No, we're not using the goat in a sacrifice. As you be okay, well, let's get out of here. This isn't good. I'm really looking for a. Uh... Let's see. As you wade deeper, the oh, no! forgets about your carrot and wanders off to explore the countryside on his own. No, goat, come back! Goat, I have carrot. I have a carrot. I have a carrot. You had better wait for. Goat. Goat. Look, restoring is a is a tr important and crucial part of playing adventure games. It is not cheating. Goat. You recall a rule prohibiting goats, except seeing eye goats, from entering the castle. Ah, mm-hmm. Yes, that's fair. It's, uh, it's illegal to discriminate against seeing eye goats, actually. When did we first get owned? We got owned over here by a wolf. Hmm. No wolf. Wolf? As you wait- Oh no! You had better wait- Go- Come on, goat. Oh goodness, what's happening? No, I didn't want this. Gentle Sir Grand, I am your fairy godmother. Your quest is indeed noble. 
What little aid I can offer you is this protective magic spell, effective for but a short while. I shall be watching over you, Sir Graham. So, like, like what happened in the original, uh, she gives you a protective spell. This one will actually last for time. As opposed to the, the zero time. But what I wanted was to get attacked by wolves with the goat. I don't, I don't want, I don't want this, this blessing on me. Blessings are stupid. Goats are way more powerful than blessings, alright? Yeah, I don't know who gave her a megaphone. Or why she thought that was a good idea. I mean, come on. I'm gonna find at least one more bit of goat-specific dialogue if it kills me. Careful, young Good. The mystic protective spell of mine has weakened and departed. That's good. That's good. Oh, oh dear. Snake. The huge snake is watching you very closely, and its intentions are less than friendly. Are snakes afraid the of goats? Goat forgets about your. No. I hope that wasn't a, uh, like a timed thing. Hmm. This is where we got the ogre, right? Yep, we entered that screen and got attacked by an ogre. Hmm. I'm super mad. I'm walking around because it doesn't happen immediately after entering the screen. So I'm trying to, uh, to walk. He walks around the goat! Yes! He walks around the goat. <sighs> oh man. I wonder if this version just kind of turned random encounters off. Because if so, that's bullshit. Uh, in, in the original version of the game, uh, the the random encounters will get scared off by your goat. Like, the goat attack you, and they're like, oh wait, no, shit, goats! And, uh... And they will leave. It's like, they were going to attack you, but then they saw your goat, and you don't fuck with goats. Speaking of which... As you start to cross the bridge, a huge hulking troll stomps into view and blocks your way. It is a well-known fact that goats hate trolls intensely. I mean, you know. Move aside and let the goat take care of this wretched, nasty troll. The goat lowers his head and runs straight for the troll, butting him right off the bridge and into the river below. Goat. That's the last you'll see of that troll. You don't fuck with goats. Good goodbye. All right. Well, anyway. Hello. You see a wizened old gnome sitting in front of his house, whittling. Whittling. Hello. Welcome, Sir Graham. I've been expecting you. 
Oh, he looks so friendly. I have something that will be of great use to you. But first, Sir Graham, you must answer this riddle. I'll give you three guesses. What is my name? Ah, this is how this is how it do. Uh, I'm gonna click cancel for now because we don't have the information necessary to know it. You weren't invited into the gnome's house. Since when do you care about that, Graham? Anyway, that's actually all there is. I think it's witch time. Which is to say, I don't know where the witch is. Ah, oh, this looks dark and spooky. Okay, so let's try house eating again. Yum! The house tastes even better than it looks. Ah, but no one said anything, so... So no one's home. There is no answer from inside the house. Okay. So. Now let's raid the closet. You take the cheese from the cabinet. Cheese is crucially important. We'll learn this in a later King's Quest game. I can smell someone tasty in my house. Shit. No, you can't. So. I'm going to get my cauldron ready to cook someone for dinner. Mm, yum. After I get the cauldron nice and hot, I'll be ready to have someone for dinner. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's try the sneaking up approach. You need to get close. The cauldron is heating up nicely. I wonder who will be my dinner guest. You need to. Uh. With a mighty shove, you courageously push the wicked witch into the pot. Her wild screams are suddenly cut off as she melts away into the oily green slime. Congratulations! See, it's okay to murder someone if they're an asshole. Uh, see, troll and witch. But the the dragon is just doing his job. It's just just how dragons do. You grab the note from the table. Yeah, all this was to just steal some cheese. There is a message written on the note. Sometimes it is wise to think backwards. So that's a that's a that's you an idea. You want to sleep on a witch's bed. So apropos of nothing, sometimes it is wise to think backwards. You know. You know. But uh, that is supposed to be a reference to the to the gnome, and we'll we'll check that out. So you've come back. Good for you, Sir Graham. You haven't guessed my name yet. All right. So let me save. So you still haven't guessed my name. Ready to take another shot at it? Okay. Uh. No bit. <gasps> Where in the world did you get that idea? That's not even close. That's totally you have two it. Left. Okay. You still Okay, so obviously it's Rumble Stiltskin. That's how you spell it, right? Yeah. I love this music. Oh, very close. Very close, but not quite right. You only have one guess left. So, uh, I'm pretty You're sure skin. that this version will accept just Rumpelstiltskin backwards. So, Rumble 
Rumpel Stilt Skin. I think that's it. That's right. Outstanding. I didn't think you were that clever. As a reward for your sharp intellect, here are some beans. They're no ordinary beans, but it's up to you to find out why. Somebody as smart as yourself should have no problem at all. <laughs> well, step over here so I can give them to you. Here you are. Good luck on your quest. Alright, so we got nine points for that. Goodbye. Uh, that's probably the maximum. You might get more points if you, uh, if you guess his name on the first try. Mm, let's try it. Okay. Outstanding. I didn't think you were that clever. As a reward for your shot somewhere. Okay, so that was the same amount of points. Yeah, this game you kinda have to be up on your folklore in order to play this game. Uh it, it definitely is just every fairy tale all at once. Uh but we got some magic beans! So, speaking of magic beans, anyone have any idea? You won't need any straw on your quest. What about... It would not be polite to steal the gnome's pile of gold. Yeah, King's Quest, its, it's moral system is pretty arbitrary. Yeah, this game definitely has an, has an audience, and I think that's fine. I think it's, it's allowed to be, to have that kind of external knowledge required. But, uh, hmm. So where would be a good place to plant some beans? Hmm. Stuff's growing here. How about, how about here? You plant the magical oh. beans in the fertile soil. Suddenly, something incredible begins to happen. Oh. I actually didn't think you could do that. I thought you had to plant it in the place with the wildflowers. But maybe this is fine. Alright. This is the hardest part of the whole game. Okay, not, not that. Uh, so yeah, in... I remember when I talked about how, like, you would only want to put the, the speed on slow if you were trying to navigate, like, super specific things? This is why you'd want to have it on slow. Now, having it on, uh, on point and click makes this much easier. Uh, because trying to navigate this with the arrow keys- ah! <laughs> arrow keys is basically impossible. Oh, we're, we're still- we're still going. So yeah, I can basically just clip- but look- like, see how his hands are on nothing? But his feet are on the right place? When you're- when you're, uh, when you're just doing it with the arrow keys? Trying to figure out, like, uh, do my feet need to be here? I'm not grabbing any- like, it's awful. It- it cares where your feet are, though. And you will fall to your death and die. Speaking of which... Next time, keep your feet on the ground and your head out of the clouds. I should have, uh, I should have saved at the top, but... I figured we need more beanstalk and but yeah, I like how it, it shows you every screen that you're falling down. It does not have the fantastic Graham screen that was in five. I guess they, they could have asked Josh Mandel to make it again. But uh You know, they're not allowed to use actual assets. I mean I say that, but they clearly reused a ton of the stuff. Anyway, here we are.
So, uh, let's, let's hang out. This is pretty normal. Oh no, I actually, I failed to do a thing. Uh. Oh, what's this? You see a slingshot in the hole. It's always, anytime there's a hole in a tree, pay attention to it. You reach into the hole and pull out the leather slingshot. So, when I was walking around with a goat, I noticed there were some pebbles on a shoreline. And if you pick up the pebbles, you can actually use them with the slingshot. Uh, for violence. So, well, we're not gonna do that. We already know violence is not the solution. Hello. If only we could have brought the goat up here, we would be fine! The giant did a smashing job of defeating you. He already did the smashing pun, come on. Yeah, so there is a there is a giant up here. Can I climb the there tree? Get out of here! Ah, good. We got to see that animation. That's good. The giant did a smashing. Gi yeah, these are some pretty Dr. Seussy trees. Hmm. The giant did a smashing. Okay, so, uh, what we're supposed to do here is. is just sort of outrun him until he tires out. He seems to be faster than I am. Oh no! No, he has pathfinding. The giant is getting tired of looking for you. Seems like he may be getting ready to take a nap. He's getting tired. He's getting tired, everybody. Okay. Yeah, if, if I had Good the sparkles job. from the megaphone fairy. The huge fairy. giant, tuckered out from stomping around, has fallen fast asleep. Okay, well, uh... There is a chest near the sleeping giant. A chest. Slowly, carefully, you take the chest without waking the giant. This magic chest, one of the three lost treasures of Daventry, is always filled with gold coins. Yeah, inflation isn't a problem. You are dazzled by the countless supply of gold coins spilling from the magic chest. You quickly close the chest. All right. So yeah, we, we did it. We did it. Yeah, the, honestly, most things had multiple solutions, but yeah, definitely having a, uh, this would be yet another, like, carefully don't fall off kind of thing. Whoops. <laughs> That's it. That's all you have to say. What a dick. Anyway, I, I assume they have some sort of, like, wizard economist whose job it is to, uh, to make sure we're not overusing the magic chest. Yeah, Josh Mandel still needs to get a better mic. Yeah, the early King's Quest game sort of had a thing about, about stairs. And trying to murder you with them. I guess the, this really looks more like a, a bridge made of planks than, than stairs. Suddenly, a small dwarf runs out of the shadows and approaches you. You dick! 
The sneaky little dwarf caught you by surprise. Did he steal anything from you? Okay, we still have the magic mirror. We still have the chest. So what did he steal? Uh, still have diamonds, still have the walnut. Hmm. Still have the cheese, the carrot, the four-leaf clover, the bucket of all things. The note. What did he steal? Either way, we, we don't want that. Oh, we stole the fiddle. He stole the fiddle. That would have been bad. I think he stole the fiddle. Let's hope we can get out of here unmolested this time. Let's go a little faster. Shut no! Uh, this time he stole the walnut. Walnut is gone. Uh, maybe he stole the egg last time? You are holding a lovely golden egg. Maybe he stole the egg. Either way, uh... Hmm... I don't want to steal anything. Get me out of here. Oh no. Well, he definitely stole the walnut the, the second time. Uh, okay. Is there a better way to get out of this place? I guess you go back down the beanstalk. Maybe we should. Cause yeah, if uh, if you do not correctly guess the gnome's name within three guesses, he gives you a key, which unlocks uh, this door. As you reach out to open the door. Oh no. Oh. Okay. But yeah, he gives you a key which unlocks this a door. A huge wooden door has been built into the base of it. The huge door is locked. You can't open it. But either way, so we have... we've got everything. Hmm... I nudged the mic a little bit. Uh... uh Jeez, I hope everything's okay. Hmm... So, that's... that's... that's two out of three. You only got, like... 33 points left. There is a small dwarf right nearby. Oh no. There is a molder. The stump will not move. Alright, so that one doesn't have anything in it. These are the pebbles I was talking about. You grab some pebbles. So yeah, we can combine the pebbles and the slingshot. Nothing. 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 Or not. You give the slings band a few flicks to test its durability. It still feels usable. Well, either way. Oh no! How many times have you been told not to wolf down your f uh, I did it. I've been owned. As you That's not how you spell stairs, but whatever. Typos will live in infamy. 
There is a small dwarf. Oh my god. The dwarf is a jerk. Anyway, I know what I'm looking for, but not how to find it. Oh. There is a mushroom in the meadow on the other side of the raging river. I wonder if there's any way to get to the other side of that river. Okay, just kidding. So yeah, there's this whole this whole river here. Hey Berlin Walrus, hey G Volt. Hmm. Ah, cause it's up there. Yeah, we just kind of can't can't get to that mushroom. So Look, we've already seen that water is deadly. Suddenly you hear the heavy uh... Anyway, I'm looking for a particular screen. We saw it a bunch of times when uh, when I had the goat. This is the screen. Okay, bird. Come on back, bird. Oh no. Don't be afraid. Actually, what is in there? Oh, right, that cave. Anyway, bird. Don't be afraid. These rocks are a little. These rocks. These. Don't be a. Get bird. Uh, bird is gone. Bird. Yep, jump. Get bird. Bird. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. Okay, so it looks kind of like you have to stand like right here. Because that's sort of where a shadow's going. Why is the music slowing down? Bird. You have to get it super early, like as soon as he shows up here. But I think I'm in the right place. Music start again, that's good. These rocks are a little these rock Jump! Uh maybe you have to be over here, where he's a little lower in the apex. Sorry, what's the opposite of Apex? A zenith? A nader. Nader, that's it. Do we get one more bird? No more birds. Okay. I'm gonna put it up to like here. So I think the bird shows up three times, so let's get to here and put the speed all the way down again. These ro Jump! Jump! Well, I guess that's probably fine. Bird. Bird. 
Okay, so yeah, we need to be to stand somewhere, but I don't know where that is. It can be like here. I'm not using slingshot on bird. Jump. Ha. <laughs> Jump when it's like here. Nah. Nah. Oh goodness. Ah, quick restore. F seven. Oh goodness. Can I the rock the rock Don't Hmm. That seemed really close, but maybe I wasn't standing in the right spot. Roughly then bird is over cave. I'll try that. Bird. Move up a little. Bird. Bird. Oh, so it wants me to go like here? Right, no more birds. Don't be a f jump with a mind. Bah! You grab hold of the condor's talons. Thank you, burned head. Game. Oh, right, the, the game speed's on slow. Okay. This is good. Bird is going to take us to faraway places. I can show you the world. Okay. Now we're here. Well, there's a conspicuous hole. Don't be afraid. Get closer. <laughs> Ah, uh, narrator, I'm not falling for that. Found the mushroom. A large bulbous mushroom grows in the meadow. Take mushroom. You pick the mushroom. You pick the mushroom. All right. In the depths of the large hole, you seem to sense a faint green glow. How can you tell? But anyway, like if we go down from here, it's the that's this area. Oh, no time like the present. Poor Graham. It's it's funny because like with the animations that they made, you can tell, and then it snaps back into the sprites they ripped from King's Quest V. Ooh. There is a single torch on the wall. Illuminating the shadowy cave. Oh dear. This is a big, hungry looking rat with slavering jaws and long, sharp claws. Hello. The rat grins crookedly. His long, pointed fangs glistening in the torchlight. That's right, mister. Just walk a little closer. What? Hello there, my friend. Are you looking for anything in particular? 
You wanna pass through my little door here, right? Well, maybe we can work something out. What's it worth to you? Hey, friend, you wanna go through this door? Make me an offer, and I'll promise I'll let you freeze right through. Uh, the pleasure of my company? Hey, friend. Okay. Well, uh... Keeping in mind the rat's remarkable agility, and even more remarkable fangs, you decide not to risk an attack. Alright. Well... What about a hug? Keeping in mind the... It's hug time. <laughs> Rats, this was one shady character you shouldn't have tangled with. That was, uh... That was pretty gory, actually. Rats like cheese, right? Cheese, eh? Well, yeah, now that you mention it, I guess I am kinda hungry. Please hungry. Rat hungry. drools at the sight of the cheese and snatches it from your hand. You might want to count your fingers. Yep. <laughs> then magically teleports away. Uh, Amazingly enough, you still have all your fingers. Good, good. Uh, yeah, in the text parser, you can actually type count fingers, and you end up with this. But I I'm glad they incorporate it by letting you look at yourself. Amazingly. Okay. Oh no. Oh no! There are two leprechaun guards here, and they don't look pleased to see you at all. What are you going to do now? Uh... See a four-leaf clover? With a genuine four-leaf clover in your possession, the leprechauns fear and respect you. <laughs> Rather than risk offending you, they decide to leave you entirely alone. Alright, so that's one of the ways you can do it. Uh, but the way better way... Wonderful job! Leprechauns find fiddle music irresistible! I mean, same. The moment they hear the music, they begin dancing a frenzied jig! Finally, swept away by the snappy music, the leprechaun guards zap right out of the room. All right. And that's how you defeat leprechauns, kids. Overhearing the fiddle music you played in the hallway, the leprechauns have begun to dance. As they do, they pop away in a fit of merrymaking. You'd be surprised how many King's Quest puzzles can be solved by making people dance. Yeah, this is the better option because it involves a musical sequence. The shield is made of titanium and is rimmed with jewels. This is the shield. You take the magic shield. Congratulations! Yay! This luxurious carpet is the product of the leprechaun's magical weaving talents. That's what I wanted to look at. The scepter. Oh. This lux. The scepter is fashioned from gold and silver and accented with emeralds. So this is the advantage of getting- of making them dance? You take the Leprechaun King's jeweled scepter. Is that he leaves the scepter behind. Uh... The small hole leads to the outside world. The outside world. Well, anyway, uh... 
crawl? You are much too big to fit through that small. Why can't Metroid crawl? Ah. Huh. It's the mushroom. This is a small, unusual looking mushroom. Careful, you do not wish to damage the delicate mushroom. You eat the mushroom. You eat the mushroom. Oh my god, it made a Mario noise! Congratulations! You now have all three of Daventry's lost treasures. Now, don't waste any time. Bring the treasure straight back to King Edward before it's too late. Gotta make it back to the, the castle before something bad happens. Uh, where's the castle? The, uh, the world map wraps around to the to the in both directions, so the world is a Taurus. Here we go. Okay, nothing. I am safe. Uh. That's odd. Why aren't the guards at their post? I was gonna say that. More curious still, the courtyard is deserted. This area is usually filled with the ladies and lords of the castle. This is highly unusual. You begin to feel deeply disturbed, as if all is not right within the castle. You can faintly hear a commotion in the king's chamber to the west. Oh dear. There is nothing to be done. Oh, our king's melancholy is too much for us hot to bear. If only Sir Graham had returned with the three oh, no. lost treasures of Daventry. It's Sir Graham. He's returned. Did he find the treasures? Shh. Listen. Your Highness, I am at your service. Did, did you succeed in your quest? I did, Your Majesty. Here, as you commanded, the magic mirror, the magic shield, yeah, and the magic chest. Dead. Huh? Long live the king. The king is dead. Long live the king. Uh. And thus ended Sir Graham's quest for the lost treasures of Daventry. Despite the loss of their beloved King Edward, the people of Daventry grew happy and prosperous for years to come. And whenever King Graham looked into his magic mirror, he saw visions of adventures yet to come for him, for his children, and for Daventry, the land he loved so much.
the end. Eh, <laughs> end. All right, so I figured out what I missed. I was missing four points there. Uh, there's an elf, and if you talk to him, he'll give you a ring that will make you invisible. And that's that's how you're supposed to beat the giant. You can make yourself invisible, and then he can't find you. So that's uh that's what I missed. So I I, I failed to show you a thing. Uh. I'm not super worried about it though. But yeah, so this is uh this is the credits. It's apparently the list of credits. The credits. Mm, yes. Fear nuts. Wait, Ryan Richardson. That's that's probably a, a coincidence. Yep, Josh Mandel. I guess John Bell was the uh the narrator. I don't know where you know this music from. I, I'm pretty sure it should have been originally written for the game. But it might be inspired by something. Anyway, how long have I been going? Oh goodness. Only an hour and a half. Um, yeah, this was just sort of a bunch of fans who decided that it, it needed a, a re-updating. They ripped a bunch of stuff from uh, King's Quest V. Uh, they used the Adventure Game Studio engine, like right there. Uh, AGS is actually really great. Uh, I tried to use it once a long time ago, but I am awful at art, and uh, it still says Ryan Richardson. Uh, okay. You've scored 154 out of 158. Play again. Try for the top score. Oh. Uh, but yeah, it was it was basically just a bunch of fans. Let me. Okay. Let me see if I can find the gnome. Or elf. It's not here. It's around where you got the bowl, I think. Do I have that? I do. Where did I get the bowl? Ah, it's right here. It's this screen. I don't know if it's just like a random encounter. Wandering oh. along the banks of the beautiful lake, you see a cute little elf. Hello. That's strange. That's strange. The elf is impressed by your friendliness and responds by handing you an elegant little ring. I've had me eye on ye, Sakrim. Methinks you might enjoy this little trinket. All For right. just a wee bit of time, it has the power to make ye invisible. May it give ye as much entertainment as ye has given me this day. With that, uh, the elf vanishes. But anyway. You place the shimmering ring upon your finger. As you rub it, you turn invisible. So I think those were the points I missed. At least some of them. Yeah, that was only three points. Hmm. Maybe using it around the giant is an extra point. And uh, I'm willing to say that it's that because I can't think of anything else I missed. So. Hmm. Alright. 